What is the standard deviation? To get the standard deviation, the first step is to find the mean. The mean is to average these four numbers. So when you add up all these, and divide it by how many terms, which is four, it looks like you get 44, correct? And then 44 divided by four is 11. Now, what does that 11 do? That 11, you need it to find your standard deviation. To find your standard deviation, it's a big fatty square root. You can do a whole bunch of stuff and you divide it by four, the number of terms. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take two things, subtract them, and square it. So you're gonna be taking two things, subtract them, and square it. Now what are those two things? Well, what you do is you take the first term, eight, and you subtract the mean, which is 11 and then you square it. You take the second term, 12. You subtract the mean, and then you square it. You take the third term, 20. Subtract the mean, and square it. And you take the last term, which is four. Subtract the mean, and then square it. And then that answer, divide by four, and then square root it. So for this one, eight minus 11 is negative three squared. Don't forget the 4 on the bottom. This right here will be 1 squared. This right here will be 9 squared. And this last one looks like it's going to be negative 7 squared. It helps to have a calculator on these. They're kind of long. So, but on the benchmark, you're not allowed one, sorry. Negative three squared is positive nine. One squared is one. Nine squared is 81. And negative seven squared is 49. Don't forget that four is inside the whole square root. And you add up all this top, what one plus 49 is 50. 81 plus nine is 90. 50 plus 90 is? This ends up being 140 over 4. You should notice at least 2 goes into both of them. When you get 2 going to both of them, it looks like we have uh, the square root of 70 over 2, which actually reduces still, doesn't it? That would be the square root of 35. And you leave it like that. That would be um, a little bit less than 6, because the square root of 36 is 6. It's like 5.9, but that's good enough. Now, number two. Number two, I want to find which has the largest standard deviation, which has the smallest. Now, the largest standard deviation would be the data that's most spread out. So the largest would be which set of data has the largest spread, like it's all kind of all over the place. And if you look at all these, I believe C doesn't have the numbers that are farthest apart. You have a 1 all the way to a 41. You have a 30. Kind of, they're kind of all jumped all over the place. When you compare all four, this data is mostly spread out. Now, what you'll have the smallest standard deviation would be the data that's most closely knit, close together. All the information is very close. And if we look at all of them, these two look kind of close, but when you look at the last one, I mean, they're really close. All those numbers are very, very close together. So the answer would be D, because all the data is very close. Now, the last question is variance. The only difference between variance and standard deviation is no square root. So basically, the variance to this problem would have been 35. Kind of almost very easy. So the first thing you need to do to find a variance is do the same process. So you first need to average. So we're adding all these terms and dividing by what? Five in this particular one, because there's five terms. So it looks like we have 15 plus 5 is 20. 25 divided by 5 is? Looks like my mean is 5. Don't stop there. Some people will stop. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to take each term and subtract it from that and then square it. We're doing all of this. So it looks like we have, uh, we're going to start with 3 minus the 5 and then square it. Plus we have a 2. So 2 minus the 5 and square it. Plus we have a 7 minus the 5 and square it. Plus we have a 8 minus the 5 and square it. Running out of space, I have to kind of jump down here. And then we have a uh, 5 minus the 5 and square it. And what's that all over? That's all over the number of terms, which is 5. A lot of people forget that 5. Okay. So we got negative 3 minus 5 is negative 2. What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared is 4. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 7 minus 5 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 8 minus 5 is 3. 3 squared is 9. And 5 minus 5 is 0. 0 squared is 0. And we divide by 5. Okay, we're almost done. Looks like we have, look here, we have a 13 plus 13 is 26. And 26 is not divided by 5, so that is my variance. My standard deviation would be the square root of that. 